My name is Stefano Troiani and we will talk about space closure technique. The first thing to talk about is some basic myomechanic principles. Since we need to have some basic understanding of biomechanics in order to be able to understand space closure. We start by to define what is the center of mass of the center of resistance of a body. The center of mass of every body is the point around which the body weight and mass is equally distributed. But what is most interesting to us is the concept of center of resistance. The center of resistance of a body is the point through which a passing force will produce a translation. Or, you can also define it as the point at which the force system will identify the kind of movement that the body will be subjected to. So, for example, if at the center of resistance we have only a force, we have a translation. If at the center of resistance we have only a moment, we will have a pure rotational movement. Most of the time we have a combination of the two, so we have a force plus a moment, since most of the movements that we apply are rototranslations. The difference between center of mass and center of resistance is that the center of mass is something that is abstract since it's uh, in a free space in which there is not even gravity. All bodies are subjected to some kind of boundaries. So we have gravity, for example, but in case of teeth, we have also the alveolar bone and we have the periodontal ligament. So the center of resistance will be something very different from the center of mass. On average, the center of resistance for the incisor is about 10 millimeters from the center of the crown. It is located one third of the root length from cement to animal junction in apical direction. In the molars, is at the level of forcation, which is on average about 8 millimeters for the center of the crown. If we apply a force at the center of resistance, we produce a pure translation. If we apply a force at the crown, which is the case that is real in orthodontics, what we will have at the center of resistance? Well, we will have a force plus a moment that is the product of the force applied to the crown times the distance from the point of application to the center of resistance. So we will have a force plus a moment which produce a rototranslation. We can also try to quantify this. Let's say we have an incisor and we apply at the level of the center of the crown a force of one gram, which is of course very little, but for calculation purposes is useful. We know that there is a distance of about 10 millimeters from the center of the crown to the center of resistance. So we can describe this situation in the following way. At the level of the center of the crown, we will have a moment to force ratio that is zero. Why? Because we apply all the force, so we don't have any moment, the moment is zero, and therefore the moment to force ratio is zero. At the level of the center of resistance, we will have a moment to force ratio that will equal 10. Why? Because we will have a moment that will be 1 gram of force times 10 millimeter of distance. So it will be 10 gram millimeter divided the force that was 1 gram. So it will be 10. The center of rotation will be approximately at the level of the center of resistance because we will have a movement that is called a tipping, specifically an uncontrolled tipping. What happens if we start to apply a moment that is in the opposite direction of the one produced by the force with respect to the center of resistance? So let's say that we can apply at the level of the center of the crown a force plus a moment that is in this case clockwise oriented, since the moment created by the force with respect to the center of resistance will be counterclockwise oriented. And let's say that we apply a, four, a moment that is called minus 5 um, gram millimeter. What we will have? We will have a moment to force ratio at the bracket that will be minus 5. Why? Because we have a minus 5 gram millimeter moment 
and a force that is 1 gram, so the moment of work ratio will be minus 5. At the level of the center of resistance, the moment of force ratio will be plus 5. Why? Because we have the moment that is created by the force times the distance to the center of resistance, so we will have 10 grams millimeter, but then we will have to detract also the moment that is minus 5 gram millimeter, because a moment it's got the same effect wherever it, whatever, wherever it is applied on a body, and therefore the moment to force resulting at the center of resistance will be 5. This will be the same that we would obtain if we would apply a force halfway between the center of resistance and the center of the clinical crown, and will give a movement that is called control tipping, in which the center of rotation is at the apex of the tooth. Let's say that now we increased and we apply at the center of the crown. And when I say apply, you have to remember that you cannot apply a moment. You can apply a couple of forces that generate some moment. But let's say now for simplicity that we apply a moment that is minus 10 grams per millimeter. So it's equal and opposite to the moment that the force creates respect to the center of resistance. We will have the following situation. At the bracket, we will have a moment to force ratio of minus 10, because we have minus 10 gram millimeter and a force of 1 gram, so it's minus 10 the ratio. At the center of resistance, we will have zero. Why? Because we have a moment that is plus 10 gram millimeter that is given by the force times the distance of 10 millimeter to the center of resistance, which is erased by the other moment that we apply, that is minus 10. So the total amount of moment will be zero, and therefore the moment to force ratio at the center of resistance will be zero. This is characterized as the translation, which the center of rotation is at the infinite over the apex. Now imagine that you go on and you can apply at the center of the crown a moment that is minus 12 gram millimeter, so a moment that is even bigger than the one that the force generates respect to the center of resistance. What will you have? Will you have at the level of the bracket, a moment for stretch of minus 12, because you have a moment that's minus 12 gram millimeter and a force that is 1 gram. At the level of the center of resistance, we do you have a moment for stretch of minus 2. Why? Because you have a 10 gram millimeter moment created by the force respect to the center of resistance, but you have a minus 12 moment before that is applied also. So minus 12 plus 10 is minus 2. So we'll have minus 2 and the force is still 1 gram, so we'll have a moment of force ratio of the center of resistance that is minus 2. In this case, you will start to move the root. So you will have a movement that is actually root torque with the position of the center of recession that is actually at the incisal of can, can't. Whenever you talk about space closure, you have to remember that we apply forces at the level of the crown. So it's obvious that when you apply forces, like in this diagram, at the level of the crown to close a space, the two segments at the level of the center of resistance would have a force plus a moment that would be directed for the anterior segment clockwise, for the posterior segment counterclockwise. So if you want to have a translation, you need to apply to moment that are counteracting these two moments, otherwise you will get just tipping, because what happens at the center of the resistance will describe the kind of movement that you are going to get. This can be done with loops. There are many kinds of loops, and actually the shape of loops uh, it counts only in determining uh, asymmetric uh, activation in a function of the amount of wire that you have on one side respect to the other. In case of symmetric loop, the difference is not so relevant, and anyway, it's behind the scope of this presentation. All loops work in the same way. You activate loops by opening them, but you pre-activated them by bending the hands so that they create moments that are counteracting the moment creating by the deactivation sagittal of the loop. What's important for you to know as this, that you see in this diagram. Whenever you 
activate, you open a loop. You can see the x-axis on this diagram. How many millimeters do you open it? At the beginning you open it, let's say, 2.5 millimeter. What you will have at that point is a moment to force ratio that is very low. Why? Because the moment that you generate that is given by the angulation of the two feet of the loop is the same. It doesn't change depending on the quantity of horizontal opening. But when it's very much open, you've got a lot of force trying to close it. So the force is high. So the moment, if the force is high, the moment to force ratio will be lower. So the moment to force ratio at the level of the bracket is rather low which means that you will tend to create a tipping, because you remember that the lower the moment to force ratio at the crown, the more tipping you get. Then the loop starts to close, so the force, the level of force, starts to decrease, and therefore the moment to force ratio, since the moment stay the same, increases. So it means that every loop works, that at the beginning you tend to get a kind of tipping, then you will get a translation, and then you will get root uprighting. What does this tell you? It tells you one important thing. Whenever you activate horizontally a loop, you open it. After having pre-activated for moments, you have to leave it time to express the moment. So when you activate about one millimeter of opening for most loops, you have to wait at least six weeks before reactivating. For example, if you use double Q loop, is what I use very often. What you do, you pre-activate inserting a 30 degree band at the distal uh, of the two double Q loop, 15 degrees per side. Then what you do, you also add a very slight speed at the distal end. And then you will try to open it, inserting a ligature director, so that on the on the thin side, of course, that gives you about 1 to 1.5 millimeter of activation. And then you can stabilize it by either ligating the loop, distal loop to the molar or making a stinge back. What is important is that you have to leave this before reactivation about six weeks. Otherwise, you don't allow for root uprighting. The, I like to use the double Q loop because it's got the versatility that in case you see that you are non-controlling of space closure, you can ligate eventually together the two loops to increase the torque. This is valid for loops. When we make sliding mechanics, so when we have an elastic chain or a coil applied to a bracket on a sliding wire, it's a very slight difference and was described very well by Robert Cousy. In this case, what will happen is that you will have a tipping of the tooth that will engage with two corners with the wire. You will have a slight deflection of the wire, which is a binding. And then the wire will tend to get back to its original shape, giving the root uprighting. Also here, it's the same principle. When you apply the linear traction, you have to leave time for root uprighting. So the biggest mistake that you can do is to reactivate too often.